Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth and final video of the RC 125th scale part spin 69 Camaro build. Over the course of this series, I've been turning this Ravel model car body and some RC components I had sitting around into this awesome RC car I've called the part spin Camaro. It hasn't just been me building this car, throughout the build process I've been reading your ideas and have been posting polls asking you all everything from what motor to use to what color to paint the body. If you'd like to catch up on this series, I've posted a playlist with all the previous videos below in the description. I'm loving how this car is turning out so far, especially that metallic blue paint I laid down in the previous video. In today's video, I'm going to be completing the car and doing some driving, so let's dive back into this build. Before going any further with detailing the body, I gave the paint plenty of time to cure. I won't be doing any wet sanding before applying the clear coat. I posted a final poll asking whether or not I should add stripes, and as you can see, adding stripes was clearly the winner. Before applying the stripes, I made sure to rinse the body. While I was at the sink, I also mounted each tire onto the wheels. As you may recall from the last video, I'm using the tires included with the model kit for this car. The tires are a really tight fit, so I needed to warm them up with some hot water to make them flexible enough to stretch over the wheels. This tire and wheel combo looks awesome and will definitely add to the scale appearance of this car. I'm using the black stripes included with the model kit. I'm going to be applying the stripes a little differently from how they would be from the factory. I'm just applying the decals from the hood forward. I'm not going to be applying these small sections that go around the cowl vents just for the sake of simplicity. This is sort of a custom car anyway, so I'm not going to worry about making it look exactly like a factory original. Another minor deviation from how it would be from the factory is with the rear stripes, I'm just adding them to the trunk rather than going up and over the rear spoiler. I've painted the rear spoiler flat black and won't be adding any stripes to it. Although I wasn't sure how much I'd like the stripes, after seeing them on the car, I really like how they look. To paint the emblems, I used a toothpick and some chrome silver paint. I'm not the best at painting these small details, but they do look nice with a bit of paint. Next I applied the clear coat and made sure to give it plenty of time to dry. The result turned out looking great. Although I don't mind a little orange peel or imperfections, I did rub in some polish to remove some of the dust that landed on the clear. After polishing, I thoroughly washed the body before I begin painting more details. I did chip off a little section of the stripe while polishing, which I was able to fix with a sharpie. Since the car won't have an interior, I needed to make some side windows which I can give a heavy tint so you won't be able to see into the body. I created a template with paper and transferred it over to some thin transparent plastic. I made some tabs which I'll be applying glue to and securing to the inside of the body. I washed all the windows, masked off the outside, and painted the inside black. Most of the trim on this body, I painted chrome silver. There's no shortage of thin trim pieces on this body. They were a bit of a pain to make look halfway decent. Masking and painting with an airbrush would probably have produced a better result, but would take a lot more time. Overall, I think it looks pretty nice with these details added. I continued by painting the wipers and side marker lights. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I added the taillights, license plate, spoiler, and rear bumper. Each part fit the body very well. With the back coming together, I moved on to the front, starting by painting all the details on the front grille. I ended up kind of messing up painting the hideaway headlights, but it turned out alright in the end. I glued it into place along with the hood, front bumper, turn signal lenses, and front spoiler. To make this part here that goes between the rear quarter window and the door window, I cut a thin piece of clear plastic and painted them chrome silver. These will go on the outside of the side windows. I used micro crystal clear glue to secure the windows since it dries clear. If you get a little smeared on the outside like I did, you can always use some clear plastic polish to remove it. They were a bit of a pain to get glued into place, but looked nice once in. At this point, the body is nearly complete. There's just a few more details to add, including the side view mirror. Finally, I wanted to add the tailpipes. I'll be using the stock exhaust included with the kit. It took some thinking to figure out exactly how to mount them, but I was able to get each side secured to the chassis. I ended up gluing this whole rear assembly in place, then cutting away the mufflers so that the panhard bar has enough room. The tailpipes really complete the look of the rear, and at this point the car is complete. What an awesome project this ended up being. I've got to say you all have some great taste in cars. It was fun posting polls and having you all vote on how you'd like the car to be built. I definitely would like to do another build like this in the future. As for this Camaro, I love the paint color, stance, and all around look. One thing I might do is reduce the camber in the front. It's maybe a little overkill for what otherwise looks like a regular street car. An all around awesome build. Of course, with the car completed and looking great, it's time to do some driving. I'll need to do a bit of tuning, especially in the rear. It's bouncing around quite a bit as you can see. I think it's a combo of both the springs and the hard model car tires not being perfectly round. Speaking of the model car tires, they don't have a ton of traction. No surprise considering how hard they are, but it makes the driving experience even more fun in my opinion. Though also a little terrifying since I really don't want to mess up this beautiful car I just built. The RF-130 motor has tons of power and this thing is fast. I can't even give it close to full throttle on this small track and with the lack of grip in the rear. Personally, I'm not really into spending hour after hour building a highly detailed RC model and then equipping it with a motor that's capable of turning the drivetrain to dust and the body into a modern art sculpture with one wrong move. But I know that's what most of you like to see, and I'll admit, it does add to the driving experience. 
It's a lot like driving a full-size big block Camaro on 20-year-old dry rotted tires. These cars definitely become more fun to drive after you've gotten a few scratches. So I did state in the first video that I'd be putting this car up for sale once it's complete. I figured that being that this car was built in part with everyone's suggestions and votes, I'd give one of you the opportunity to own it. I'll be posting that link below in the description when it's ready, though like I said before, there are just a few things I want to adjust before I'll be posting it, but if you're interested, the link will be below when it's ready. The STL files for the FFR SC1 chassis that will fit these 69 Camaro bodies will be posted on a Patreon soon. On the live streams, I'm currently doing a build with a 70 Camaro body using the same chassis. Once I've confirmed that the chassis is good to go, I'll be posting the STL files. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.